My first question is, what was the craziest choreography job you had? I guess the craziest choreography job I ever had was working with Whitney Houston because she couldn't, with that amazing voice and that amazing body, she didn't really move very well. So I had to keep pulling things down and down until I basically gave her snaps and that was it. And then she was very comfortable. So that was the weirdest one. Everybody else picked up, everybody else I've worked with has always picked up quick, rather quickly. Wow. My guest today is the iconic choreographer and dancer extraordinaire, Mr. Vincent Patterson. I love you, Vincent. First of all, I just want to say I, I just finished your book, Icons and Instincts. And it, oh my God, it was so good. It's one thing when you know somebody, but you don't know all of them. Yeah. And so I was discovering you throughout the book. Oh. And I tell you, uh, there were parts of it that made me so angry. <laughs> and then at the end, it, oh my God, my heart was breaking. Oh. It just goes to show what a wonderful book it is because there were parts that made me so emotional and made me want to yell and how some people treated you. If I could have done a drive-by and beat the <laughs> crap out of them, I would, that's my friend. What you? But Whoa. it was a wonderful journey. And I suggest if you are a fan of dance or of pop music or just theater. The culture, theater, yeah. culture, film, acting, dance, this is a must-have book. And it's available. I usually do this at the end, but I would start it at the beginning. You can get it on hardback, paperback, Kindle, or audio. Even though it's not Vincent talking you through the book, it still is entertaining. So it's available on Amazon, and I'm going to put the link for you below so you can get this book because it's really a history of our dance culture from the 80s on. And what is so great, Vincent, is that you really were at the forefront of uh, uh, the iconic videos that we all know, starting with Michael Jackson. Yeah. Was, yeah, beat it. And being in it, being one of the dancers in it, but going on to work with him. So uh, it's a wonderful ride. I want to start with your early life. You grew up in Pennsylvania. Your parents divorced at an early age, and you had to be the man of the house. Yeah. yeah, my dad left when I was about 13 ish, and we had, I have three younger brothers and a younger sister. My mom is only 19 years older than me. So it was very tough. We were very poor, and yeah, she had to go work, and I had to take over the household and become daddy. And it was difficult because my brothers. I don't have the best relationship with my brothers. My sister's the youngest and we're very close, but I think my brothers resented the fact that I had to stand in and be the disciplinarian and give them the rules and the fight in the house kept being, you're not my father, you're not my father. Yeah, I know I'm not your father and I wish I wasn't in this position, but unfortunately I am. So yeah, but you know what? Experiences like that make you stronger and you never know. And I'll tell you, some of the projects I've been involved with, I think that I that early education of being a kind of a young dad in a way gave me a lot of strength and a lot of backbone to handle a lot of the difficult situations that I found myself in throughout my career. Everything happens for a reason and everything is basically a blessing ultimately. What I love though, it, uh, as you tell the story in the book, as you start uh, sharing your youth, your grandmothers, uh, I loved reading about the relationship that you had with your grandmothers and how they molded you in different ways. It was difficult because my house was quite violent and my father was a very violent man. And so my escape was my grandma's. And I had one grandmother who was just nurtured the crazy artist in me as a young kid. And she had a room up in the back corner of her house filled with old costumes and dresses and things. She sewed a lot, and which gave me like a theatrical, a, a back a trunk 
to be able to grab things out and dress my cousins up and put on shows and do all of that. And my other grandmother was from descended from Poland and she wanted to always go back to Europe and she was very poor. In fact, she had three little hair dryers in her front room for the Polish ladies on the street and she would do their hair and she saved up all of her pennies. And when I was 12 and I was a precocious 12, she took me to Europe for two and a half months. The two of us just went all over Europe and it was absolutely phenomenal. It was the first time I saw dance. It was the first time I saw theater. I saw the sound of music in London. I went to the Follies Berger in Paris. It was phenomenal. And these grandmothers both, thank, I'm so grateful for them. They both brought so many different things into my life and they both taught me so much about who I am and who I was going to be. Now, your father taught dance. Yes. My father was a, a social dance teacher, among other things. We were really quite poor. And he had three different jobs. He sold insurance. He sold real estate. And he taught dance in the evenings. He said that it was a very important that we did, never called it ballroom dance. We had to call it social dance because he said there was this whole stigma of ballroom dance that he didn't teach was the form and the elegance and all of that. He just wanted to teach people what, how to dance comfortably when they went to a party, when they went to a wedding, when they went to a baptism or any other kind of celebration, backyard barbecue. Now, did you get to go and watch him teach dance? Yes, I did. When I was a young teenager, after he left the house, I did. I went with him a couple of times to go to class with and watch him teach class. And he was a really good teacher and he had a great personality and that's why it was so difficult because the person that he was with these people was not the person that he was around the house. So it was kind of difficult. And he had thousands and thousands of students over the years. He taught at a place called DuPont Country Club in Delaware. And he taught so long that he was teaching the grandchildren of the of, of students who had come in, uh, couples who had come in years and years before. So wow. he, he, he had a good reputation for being a teacher. There's one place in the book where you talk about him seeing your name on the uh, Grammys and how it affected him because he saw his name. Yeah, it was the Academy Awards, actually. It was, I've done a, created a piece for Madonna, a solo piece for Madonna to a song from Dick Tracy. And, and I had a big credit. Of, I had a full card credit. It was like amazing. And I came home. I was so excited. I had it on, I taped it, or videotaped it, and I ran it back and looked at it. I was so thrilled. And the phone rang, and it was my dad. And my dad was an alcoholic. And so he was crying through his drinks. And he said, oh, my gosh, I'm, I, I can't believe it. I'm just, I, I just can't believe it. And I said, what, Dad? He goes, that credit that you had on that, on there, do you know how many there was like a billion people or something saw that show. And I said, wow. And he said, you know what that means? And I said, what, Dad? He goes, a million people saw my, a billion people saw my name up there. And I thought, oh, God, Dad, come on. You named me after you. Is this why? You know, it, anyway. But that was, Upper. that probably was his big moment in life that he got to see his name. Yeah. When I read that, that touched me. I, I I know how it affected you, but it touched me because when I was early on in my acting, I added my mother's last name. Oh. Uh, her last name was Cummins Young. Uh -huh. So I did it for a year so she could see her name oh. on TV or whatever. Oh. So she could see it because I learned almost towards the end of her life that she wanted to be an actor. Oh my God. And so your childhood, there's a lot of similarities to our childhood. I, I had to be the oldest. I wasn't the oldest one in the house, but I became the oldest one in the house that had to take care of my siblings and they would gang up and beat me up and <laughs> <laughs> I have to get the broom. I, and, and it was a violent home and we had alcohol and drugs and prostitution and all that stuff. But being able to give her the name, her name that oh. she could see it, I thought was the best gift I could ever give her because it was something that she was never able to attain. And so here she got to see her name. So when you spoke about your dad, even though 
he wasn't kind and he didn't live up to father and all of that. I got that little, that was a huge moment. So I just, it, it affected me in a way that it was like, that's the thing about your story, right? It will affect people in many different ways. It's like dance, choreograph a dance, but everybody takes away something different. Absolutely.